Hey, what's going on there, folks? How's everyone doing? Welcome back here to a Monday, March 18th, 2024 is the date. It's about 12, 12 p.m. here, California time. Looking at uh, a live look here of the Iceland activity, eruption activity. It looks like there is still a couple active vents out there, creating that uh, beautiful cone feature out here on the landscape with, of course, the lava flow continuing to advance very slowly, but it's still advancing. Uh, check out this latest map here that they put out uh, for the uh, most recent activity. This is the uh, movement here since yesterday uh, in the red line. Of course, uh, this activity right here in the yellowish, orangish color is uh, from the most erupt eruptive event here that took place a couple days ago. Very close here to the sea, uh, although movement has slowed down quite nicely uh, this barrier right here the berm is doing its job by preventing the uh, magma flow or at least the lava flow um, preventing it from getting any closer to the Grindavik area and some of these buildings out here so uh, eventually eventually um, it looks like it's kind of going to come pretty close but I don't think it's going to hit it uh, it does have the potential to go out here to see if we see uh, further influx of magma and a uh, maybe a little bit faster flow of the lava but uh, as of right now things are um, relatively stable uh, is the key wording here by the Icelandic Met Office uh, we're still seeing uh, of course some activity stirring up here and uh, things are slowing down though in terms of the lava movement there is a very slow movement of the lava flow towards the road the main road there and uh, the lava flow was about uh, 330 meters from the road that was at 1650 utc time on the 18th and uh right now it is uh well about 1916 on the 18th so a couple hours ago this update was put out and uh, here's the most recent one but uh, again there is an updated map as well in terms of the potential of hazards so let's check this out real quick let me get rid of that uh zone three of course is one of the main areas for eruptive activity the lava flow of course is heading right here you can kind of see it on the map it's outlined very close there to one of the main roads there leading out of Grindavik to the east uh, zone four where the Grindavik area is is uh, hazard assessment is sinkholes fault movements and gas pollution um, from the volcanic gases obviously uh, if that should interact here with the sea the salt water uh, then we would see hydrochloride um, take place and it's an acid and uh, that would not be good again I don't think we're gonna get that close um, to the area unless we see a further uh, push or a, a new eruptive event take place here but we're a distance away from the sea right now uh, zone 3 of course sinkholes fault movements eruptive fissures without warning lava flow tephra and gas pollution you notice a lot of these covering the gas pollution here so uh, just a heads up in terms of that activity zone seven down here south or uh, west of the Grindavik area looks like the least concern right now sinkholes and fault movements according to this hazard assessment map put out here by the Icelandic Met Office uh, really no uh, no major change you know again we're away from the road by uh, a distance here's the uh, current wind wind flow notice that is heading off towards the west look where it's taking the uh the volcanic gases there off to the northwest that's why the uh, elevated hazard assessment shows uh pollution or the uh, volcanic gases there so we'll continue to watch that um again we're not out to sea yet we're not out uh within that seawater area and there would be a huge interaction with that lava in the seawater this would be the uh, radius of the potential hydrogen chloride acid uh, it'd be within about uh, 0.5 kilometers from the entry point of the lava reaching into the sea this would be a, a pretty decent area that would include uh, a lot of the uh, Grindavik area as well so I'll definitely continue to watch that as uh, far as earthquake activity out there let's see what we got for uh, earthquake movement uh, I think still, yeah, 
a little shaky out there, not too bad. Um, around the area of interest here where we're currently seeing our eruptive activity, not a whole lot of earthquake movement. There's another beautiful sight there of one of the eruptive vents. Let's take a look at this webcam here. By the way, alive from Iceland.is slash webcams is the uh, cool site to check out these images here. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but at the same time, very deadly, right? Uh, it does look like there's a, a handful of eruptive vents out there still uh, taking place. This is kind of a longer duration. almost seems like it's longer than the uh, uh, past three eruptions there. Of course, this most recent eruption took a little bit longer as well uh, in terms of the intervals between these last couple eruptions. We were looking at about 30 days or so, even a little less in between each eruption. This one lasted a little bit longer uh, in terms of the time frame between the last eruption, but also it looks like it's lasting longer uh, in terms of the amount of volume of magma coming up. So we'll continue to watch that. Let's go check out the uh, earthquake activity, see if anything else is going on out here in the world today. Um, are we live? There we go. All right, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity out here on the USGS map. Check out the largest magnitudes. Looks like we did have a 5.3 out here into the Volcano Islands area of Japan at the southern end here of the Izu Trench, but upstream, uh, not into the subduction zone, but very shallow at about 10 kilometers for a 5.3. Um, and then most of the activity, it looks like, is from yesterday in terms of larger scale movement. We did see a 4.9 into the Indonesia Islands area in the blue circle with the most recent earthquake here around the Greece area outside of Crete with a 4.0 coming into this area about 43, kilometer, uh, 43 kilometers deep into a portion of this uh, trench area. Looking at the earthquake 3D globe here. Looks pretty uh, scattered out here across the states, the North American region. Not seeing too much activity out there, but let's double check, see what's going on. Did have a little earthquake out here across the South Carolina region yesterday. That's a 1.9. Uh, also some movement here across the New Madrid seismic zone from yesterday as well, a little 1.4. Aside from that, uh, general microquake activity out here across the oil fields. Nothing going on up there across Yellowstone, but... Uh, let me view that and double check. I noticed last night there was a little bit of activity stirring up out here around the borehole area, but it's kind of hard to tell if this is legit earthquake activity or maybe some type of uh, ice quakes or whatnot. This may be uh, some wind events. Let me see what we got here. It was limited to a couple stations up here. Purple Mountain borehole. Looks like Old Faithful picking up that activity as well, but I, I believe that's wind. It's been showing up quite a bit here on occasion. Uh, let me double check the windy map. Of course, things look like they have calmed down. Uh, but earlier today, let's go back in time here a little bit, a couple hours and see what we had. Six o'clock. It really doesn't show too much activity out here in terms of wind. Uh, but definitely some type of signal out there around Purple Mountain, Borehole, Old Faithful, over here as well across the east entrance. So... Uh, it's hard to say. More than likely, you know, it's it's going to be some wind events. If this was magma movement or some type of uh, uh, fluid movement below the ground, it would obviously not be limited to just one station. We would see it, um, you know, across the majority of these if it was indeed uh, some type of magma movement. But I think that's wind. All right. Looking at the California area here. Handful of smaller quakes, including a one, well, we got one quake here in the last hour near Lakeside, California, just outside of the San Diego area. Uh, that is, um, not for sure which fault system that's on. There's a couple faults here just on the uh, east side of San Diego there in the mountains, but uh, uh, USGS not really showing all the faults out here, but a uh, little earthquake out there today, 1.5, nothing big. A look at the 2.5 map and above. Let's see what we got here for California. Not a whole lot here. In fact, uh, just one 2.5 up into the Idaho area from last night. So aside from that, general microquake activity. Nothing major going on across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault for now. And 
I think I need new batteries here for my mouse. <laughs> it's acting a little weird. Uh, Bay Area of California, fairly quiet as well. And uh, Northern California, a handful of smaller quakes up here outside of Redding. But really, um, nothing major going on here today. One small earthquake outside of Mount Rainier as well. The uh, big island of Hawaii out here as we zoom in looks uh, fairly stable. About 10 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. No major swarming going on. No unusual activity to take note of out there. Down across New Zealand, nothing showing up here on the board. But it uh, looks like they did have a handful of smaller quakes this morning. A couple threes around the North Island area. If you recall any of my videos here that you've watched, I've been chatting about the New Zealand area for quite a while. They've been seeing a lot of deeper activity underneath the North Island area with uh, occasional surface adjustment happening upstream. So we're still seeing that today across the North Island area. Fairly quiet, roughly uh, about Papua New Guinea eastward here now. The majority of the uh, pressure and momentum obviously looks like it's up against the Filipino plate and the northwest corner here of the Pacific plate. That would be the Kuril Kamchaka Trench with a 4.7 coming in just a couple hours ago right there on that subduction zone. We'll continue to watch that because this area is definitely primed for some bigger movement. Uh, there's that 4.7 in Iceland yesterday. Uh, as we've seen on the earthquake um, map up here, not a whole lot right now. Things have definitely uh, calmed down out here across the rift zones in terms of earthquake activity. All right, looks like we're kicking up a large M flare right now in M6.7 coming in into the uh, space weather department. There it is out there on that active region there just south of the old sunspot 3590. You guys remember 3590? That was the ultimate source here of the largest X flare this solar cycle. That's going to be the old sunspot 3590 renamed to 3614. That M flare right now currently taking place is from another active region, 3615, down here uh, just south of the um, center portion of the sun. All these sunspots are rotating around the bend here and will be facing Earth in the coming days. They've already been some active, re uh, active activity out there uh, from 35 or 3615, the source of the current M flare. Uh, it looks like we're experiencing a little bit of radio blackout as well on the sunlit side of the Earth, centered over the eastern Pacific. So we're looking at uh, a little bit of uh, radio blackout just for uh, mainly low frequency navigation systems and uh, high frequency communication systems there in the 3 to 30 MHC zone. That would be around CB radio or ham radio. Uh, but far as any effects here to the uh, pow power grid and whatnot, it uh, doesn't look like it's going to take, um, going to have any effect on it. I'm kind of curious to see if this is going to keep going up and up and up. Definitely a decent flare. Oh, there we go. Looks like we peaked. We go here to the one day. You can see that curvature going on. Looks like a very impulsive type event. Doesn't look like it had any uh, eruptive activity with it eruptive activity would uh, show this as a drawn out line a little bit uh, thicker instead of a sharp up and down spike on the graph which would indicate an impulsive event um, I am gonna save this here before it disappears <laughs> but that's a uh, goodness that's definitely a uh, decent flare so an M6.7, right? Largest. M6.7 from that sunspot region there. So things are definitely kicking up here. Uh, Got to watch that in the days ahead. As 3615 and 3614, 3590. I don't know why they don't just keep them named, you know, the same thing. Because this is not a new sunspot. It's a sunspot that has went around the, the sun a couple times. You know, this is nothing more than 3590, but uh, I don't keep track of the names and whatnot and the numbers. I don't control that, but these guys, uh, these sunspots are basically the same thing, 3590 right here. 3615 is, is definitely a new sunspot that has popped up 
All right, so uh, complexity within these sunspot cores definitely uh, amplified. Notice uh, this region up here, fairly complex. This area down here where we're seeing that uh, current M flare, quite a bit of intermixing here of different colors. We'll have to watch both of these sunspots as they are rotating into the Earth, more di Earth directed view in the days ahead. I think we have a decent chance of seeing maybe some more X flare activity. Right now, 5% chance for an X flare, M flare at 40, C flare around 99%. See that popping off there a little bit. So uh, yeah, it looks like space weather is going to be kicking up here a little bit. We do have a G1 class storm coming up here. Um, it looks like on the March 20th time period. So a couple days here. We'll cover that a little bit later. I don't think it's uh, anything big. This is going to be off of a uh, uh, small CME. A little earth glancing blow here that will uh, affect the earth. Let's see what we got. Is this working or is it offline? Looks like, huh, okay. Well, we'll check that a little bit later. Storm Prediction Center out here. Anything major going on in the severe weather department? Doesn't look like it. Looks like some thunderstorm activity across Southern California into the Arizona and New Mexico area. Marginal risk over here across Florida for, uh, looks like maybe a little 2% zone there of, uh, Tornado probability or maybe even some water spouts out there. Wind and uh, some hail threats in there as well. But nothing major going on uh, across the uh, weather department. As we look into the future here, got a little storm system coming in again next weekend across the west coast. Bigger storm out here across the east next weekend. And uh, this storm system out here across California uh, that comes in next weekend is going to open up the storm door to uh, it looks like a few more storm systems out there. This uh, looks like uh, winter is going to hang around here for a little bit, which is okay with me. But uh, we're getting closer to that April 8th date. And that's when the total eclipse is going to happen out here across a broad area uh, of the country. Limited, of course, to a certain um, range. But a lot of people in high population areas are going to see the total eclipse. Hopefully, it will not be cloudy and rainy. So I'm uh, continuing to watch the models out here for um, for the potential weather setup out here around the 8th of April. Again, that's, this is even April 3rd is a ways out. But uh, it'll give us a little hint as to what may be going on around that time frame of April 8th during the total eclipse. All right, seismograph stations here look pretty quiet. Uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later this evening. Spring break here for uh, me and uh, quite a few other students out here uh, so i got a week off of um, oh, no school work so i'm okay with that so we'll be out here just kind of doing some yard work supposed well, to be about 78 degrees again today pretty nice and i'm just kind of ready to uh get some decent sun going on here decent weather i'm i mean i like the rain but i also like uh, the sunshine as well for this time of year have a good one folks we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on take care